Hello, everyone. Good morning. I, again, I, I also want to thank you very much for coming so early on Saturday morning. Um, you're making me very nervous. There's a lot of you, uh, but I hope, I hope that it'll be an interesting talk. Um, my name is Marta, and I am a, a quality engineer, actually, at Red Hat. And I'm going to talk to you today about something that most people probably don't think so much about or don't want to think so much about, I guess you're interested in, um, which is the bootloader. And um, the title of my talk, you can see, is uh, No More Bootloader, Please Use the Kernel Instead. Um, we call this concept nimble for No More Bootloader. And it's the idea to use the kernel in a unified kernel image as its own bootloader. Uh, so this is a, an outline of my talk, uh, some questions that I hope I'll answer for you. Um, first, we're going to start with, like, what is a bootloader, and what do we actually require of the bootloader, which I think is an important thing to start from. Um, and as a bonus, we'll talk a bit about secure boot there. Um, then we'll talk about what Linux has now, and why we might want to maybe not use what we have currently. Um, as with any new project, any new uh, development, you might ask, well, there are a lot of bootloaders. There are a lot of choices out there. Why not use something that already exists? Do we really need something new? And I hope that I'll convince you that, that, we, that we, it would be better maybe to have something new. And finally, I'll start talking about what is Nimble. Um, what is it that we're doing? Um, what have we done so far? And uh, where do we go from here? And there, I'll definitely want your, be interested in your feedback and your questions, of course. So what's the purpose of a bootloader? This concept, this, this bootstrap loader, you may know, it comes from like what's supposed to be an impossible thing to do, that you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And so you're going from you know, the computer being off to having the, the operating system running. And of course, there's lots of other stuff that happens in between. It's not all the bootloader that does that. The bootloader is just the first like, piece of software that runs. Um, and so it needs to find the kernel, and it needs to get the kernel into memory, and it needs to load also the init RAM of us and, and get everything ready for, for, for booting and it, 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 for getting the operating system running and transfers control to the kernel. Now, you may think to yourself, well, but I just have to boot a laptop or I just have to boot a desktop or whatever. It's not that hard. You know, it's not a big deal. Uh, everything is local on the hard disk. I don't have any you know, RAID, I don't have any, uh, you know, weird file system or anything else like this. It's not such a hard job. But of course, for Fedora or for RHEL, we have to support a lot of crazy schemes. We have to support uh, multiple architectures, all the different kinds of firmware. We have to support many different file systems and all kinds of complex storage. Um, we boot from over the network, over NFS, HTTP, all of these things have to be possible. And there are so many ways that it can go wrong. As all of you who have filed bugs with us know. <laughs> um, so then I'm also going to mention this concept of secure boot. Um, secure boot, uh, it exists in a couple of different incarnations. The idea of secure boot is basically that you have um, you can uh, trust that your machine doesn't have any, any malware from the beginning, uh, any sort of boot kit, by having basically a root of trust that starts in hardware, that starts in firmware, and that only loads bootloaders that are trusted. And thus, those bootloaders will only load um, kernels that are trusted. And there are, this is, there are, there are different ways that this can be done. Um, in UEFI uh, is sort of the best known, I think, version of secure boot. Um, the way that it, the scheme looks in UEFI is that um, there's a certificate uh, which, is, uh, which comes from Microsoft, and it's, uh, it's in firmware, and we're able to, and it is what loads the first stage bootloader, what we call the shim. So if the shim is signed uh, correctly, and it's not in a deny database, for example, then it will, it'll be verified and it'll load. And that shim, its only purpose basically is to be signed, to be the root of trust. And it is sort of the, it's the pivot 
from the hardware root of trust to the operating system root of trust. Um, it, um, it can do verifications and revocations, and it will only load uh, a next stage bootloader, which it knows is, it has been signed. And so that, that's, that, in this diagram, this is a grub. Um, grub, you may know, uh, you get a menu, you can choose a target, a, a kernel, uh, an operating system, and then um, you can also do, do editing of, the, of, of various command line options. And it calls back into shim to verify the kernel that you've chosen. And finally, the kernel, if, if it's correct, if it's been signed, if it's trusted, um, it will then do its thing and, and get you um, into user space. Um, we mentioned, I mentioned the, uh, the init ramifas. So that's one of the things that, of course, that the bootloader has to load. And actually, in secure boot, that's the biggest security hole. Uh, the init ramifas isn't... Uh, it's not signed, and it's not measured, and so it, even though this, this process is nice, we still have a, a security hole, uh, unfortunately, that we have to worry about. Okay, so what do most Linux distributions use now? Uh, we use Grub. I already mentioned that. Um, all of you probably know Grub uh, pretty well. Um, it stands for the Grand Unified Bootloader. I, I, my background is actually in physics, so I've always thought that this was a really cute name. But um, so, so Grub is Grub is great, and Grub does a lot of all the, the things that I mentioned. Um, Grub does, and it does it does it pretty well. I mean, it's a, it's a multi bootloader, um, which means it can it can load multiple operating systems, multiple kernels. Uh, it um, can do complex. It can load from complex storage. It can uh, it knows all kinds of file systems. It does a lot of great things over network, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's really complicated. I mean, as a result, because we need, oh, uh, for um, languages, it needs to know different languages and different fonts and different keyboard setups. It's basically a little mini operating system all on its own. So we have to basically duplicate all of the things that you might need, that you might want as you're bringing up your hardware in order to boot that hardware. So it's complicated. It's, it's very, it's, 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 it's got its problems. So why might we want to change? So all software has bugs, right? It's not a, um, you know, this is, this is definitely not unique to, to Grub that there are bugs, um, that, there are, that there are issues, that there are feature requests, of course. Um, this is a stag beetle. These things are terrifying. I don't know if you know them. They're native here in Czech. They're really big and they actually fly. So they're, my, my kids love them, but they're terif terrifying things. Um, so, so we have plenty of bugs, and many of them relate to these, you know, file, file system bugs and, and, comp and storage bugs, memory allocation bugs, things that are difficult and that we don't really have... Um, the resources for, and which is sort of uh, things that get fixed already in kernel, for example, but that, um, that have to be fixed again. There are lots of security vulnerabilities. Um, these are just, uh, these are some of the security vulnerability CVEs that have been fixed in Fedora recently. Um, there's only one right now for 2024, but believe me, more are coming. Um, so, and a lot of these, they're, again, they're, they're font problems. They're, they're sort of weird, complicated problems that are difficult to fix and, and are annoying. And so right now I've been appealing to you sort of as developers, as like from, from the maintenance point of view, from the development point of view. But the other thing is, of course, like for the user, because you're also users. And we want something that you know, not just that we don't want to maintain it, but that we want it to be secure and to work well for you. And um, I've already mentioned the, the, the problem with the init ramifest in the, as it is in secure boot. But also, um, all, of these, all of these problems, they have to be fixed once in the kernel, for example, and then they have to be fixed again. We're always going to be behind. We don't have uh, nearly as many people, nearly as much visibility. And... Um, and we, the upstream in Grub, unfortunately, was not even working for a while. Um, if any of you have ever unpacked Grub, you'll see that we're carrying hundreds of downstream patches, unfortunately. We're trying to fix all of this, 
but it's a huge task, and, um, and it goes slowly. So finally, we get to uh, what is Nimble? What is this thing that we're working on? So Nimble is uh, a unified kernel image, uh, which means that it's uh, the kernel itself, the kernel command line, um, the init ramifest, and then uh, an FE stub, which provides uh, an entry point and which, uh, which makes the whole, which wraps everything up as, a, as an FE executable that can, be, that can be run from the UEFI firmware. And this whole thing can be signed. And so it is now, now the whole thing becomes secure. And it can then be the bootloader so that there doesn't have to be another stage, uh, a stage that loads the kernel. We already have the kernel, and it's loading itself. Um, we think of Nimble right now as sort of as, a, as an idea, that we're, took, that we're taking a whole bunch of things that have already existed. Um, we're adding a little bit of code, not too much actually, and we're just putting together a lot of, a lot of things that already exist in Linux and we're putting them together and making something that hopefully works better, that is, that is uh, more secure, more functional. Um, so I mentioned already the, the unified kernel image. Um, the FE stub, so systemd stub, is what, we're, is what we're using. So again, it's something we already have in Fedora, something that we're already using. Um, for the menu, uh, we, we will have a, a menu in certain versions of Nimble, and we plan to use the Grub MU. So basically, you would see a menu that looks like Grub, that looks familiar to you, and, um, and you could choose a different kernel, for example, if that's what you want to do. Uh, of course, we need an init ramifest generator. In Fedora, that's Drekut, but of course, in other distributions, they have something else. So, uh, and, and then, of course, secure boot. And all of these things come together, and we can have nimble, and we can have it work. And we use all these different pieces that, that are already working quite well. Um, so uh, what do we have so far? These are two uh, different schemes of how we're, we're building. We're building nimble now in two ways. And we, these are these two variants. So on, on the left, what you see is uh, the sort of nimble reduction. So we go from UEFI. We're going to continue to use the shim because we want to use secure boot. And basically, in this case, um, we call this nimble cloud, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, the idea is that you want to load, that you're going to run the same kernel that you've built nimble from. And so you don't have to actually execute another kernel. All you have to do is switch root in the kernel that, you, that, that Nimble is already built from, and you get to user space. There's no menu. It boots quickly, and, and, and that, that's it. Alternately, of course, people might want to have another kernel. They might want to use something else. So we have another, another case, um, which is basically which, which is a very similar. So Nimble is built with one kernel, but you're interested to, to run another one. So then it has uh, the kexec functionality, which again is something we already have. It's not something that we have to rewrite or whatever. Um, and you, so you get a menu that looks like Grub. We have the Grub MU menu. And um, then you're able to choose a different kernel, kexec runs and finally you get to your kernel and or you get to your final kernel and you get to user space and you boot. Um, so we would, I mean the thing, the thing that we're really uh, interested in is what people think and what people, um, uh, for feedback and for, for, um, uh, for your use cases. Um, so we have a public repo on GitHub, and we're happy to, you're, we would love to have you uh, try it out if you want to. Um, and I, I've been writing a, like a blog, um, which I hope will be on Fedora Planet soon, um, which sort of describes some of the stuff that I've talked about here, 
and which actually there's a link uh, that describes for you how you can build and sign and do everything with Nimble yourself if you're interested, if that's something that, that you'd like to do. Um, so, so that's where the code is. So where do we go from here? Um, there's still a lot of work to be done. It's unfortunately, it's, uh, it's slow going. Um, but so the first thing is that we'd like to integrate Nimble, uh, the Nimble build into the kernel build so that Nimble would get built uh, with every new Fedora kernel and then you could also install it that way and run it as the first case that I mentioned, that you, you simply install it and then you can, you can run it. Um, you, you'll boot the same kernel that Nimble was built from. Uh, which will also simplify your trying it out, of course, if you have the, the RPM that you can install. That, that should be available soon, that you can just install the RPM and try it out yourself. Um, we are also working on shim AB booting. Uh, so integrating into FE Boot Manager, which is again a tool we already have, um, uh, fallback, uh, which keeps track of the last known good boot state and which sets that to boot next so that we have boot counting and, 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 uh, and have fallback for when, in, when we install a new shim or in case there's any problem with, with the boot process. Uh, we're going to have FE, FE variables for hiding and showing the boot menu, uh, which will use system degenerators. So again, things that we already have uh, and that we don't have to write ourselves um, that will enable a boot menu um, uh, if, you, if you want it. Uh, of course, right, right now what I've shown is a proof of concept. It's on UEFI. And um, of course, we, want, we would like to get it working on other architectures as well. So we're thinking about that and we are working towards that. Uh, I have the Nimble blog. I hope to continue to update it, and um, I hope that you'll take a look at it. And we'd love to have your feedback uh, now in questions or, or in the future on the blog or anywhere else. Um, I just want to acknowledge the people who have worked on this. Uh, Peter Jones is our you know, tech lead, the developer who is mostly developing this. And um, Nicola Leo are also working on Nimble recently. Uh, Richard is working on FE Boot Manager. Um, Peter is my fellow QE who works on Nimble as well. And then uh, managers, as well as people who have worked on this uh, in the past, engineers who are no longer in, in bootloader engineering, but who have worked on this. Um, so that's it. I was anticipating questions. <laughs> so I imagine you have them. Thank you very much for your attention. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, please. That's that's possible. I'll I'll do my best, but if I if I so can't. I, I seem to recall that uh, Mark Moose John is working on the I'm sorry. Can you can you speak a little bit louder? Sorry. I can't. itself when we crash dump, when we panic and crash dump, we boot on a fewer number of CPUs due to some of these issues. Uh, are, are, have you tested on older hardware to verify that this can actually get worse, or is it just a limited set of those large tests that we um, So the, the first question about ACPI tables, I, 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 no, that's, I, that's not a question I, I could answer, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have not tested on uh, and and uh, run, run, yeah um, wh whether we've t tried it, whether we've tested on older hardware that that the crash dump that it runs on a, a fewer number of CPUs. We um, I don't think any of us have tested on hardware yet. I, I know that there were some early tests on hardware um, 
but we have not been testing on hardware recently. We've been testing on our virtual machine. I have a, I have a, a um, actually I can show you uh, nimble booting if you'd like to see it. I completely forgot to, um, to show my, my demonstration. I was so, uh, I was so talking about, so uh, yeah, so I can, so, sorry, I completely forgot about this. So um, this is a, um, a VM. Can you see it now? Is it okay? Um, so this is, a, this is a VM that I have built and, and uh, installed Nimble on. I have a couple of, uh, of FE entries here. So this is the, the switch root case. Um, and this is the kexec case, as you can see. And um, I can set the live demo, so, so bear, bear with me, please. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll be fine. Um, I've, uh, I, I've written a really simple like, script that, that um, uh, logs which entry is supposed to boot and which entry actually did boot. So here you see that Shim, Shim was loading, Shim loaded Nimble, and everything is booting. And since this is the switch root case, um, there's been no, um, no menu, and everything just booted, booted fairly quickly. And I can show you, um, um, this is this most recent boot. Uh, boot next was was set to nimble switch and uh, it booted um, the entry that we were interested in. I can also measure the time that it took for for the system to reboot. And if we choose the other, um, this the k exec case, then we can also we can also uh, reboot and see what happens. And you see, you see, you get a, a grub like menu. We can choose, we can choose a different kernel, and see what happens there. And it also boots nicely. Um, I do have secure boot on, so I've signed everything. Yeah, the password is wrong. That's fine. So, so that's it. It looks, it looks very much like like grub. As you can, as you can see, um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so we've been we've been testing it on we've been we've been building it and testing it on virtual machines so far. But yeah, absolutely, uh, hardware is is definitely the way to go to try it on hardware and different kinds of hardware. Um, the question was that, that um, this looks a lot like Petite Boot, which is on uh, bare metal power PCs. Um, uh, you're right. So um, there was the idea whether or not Petite Boot could be used. And it uses actually two different kernels. There's a stripped down kernel, and then there's the full kernel. And so the idea just to, simply to use Petite Boot was, was rejected. But um, you're right that it's a similar approach. And we think that it might be possible we haven't, we haven't tried it, unfortunately, yet. But we think that it might be possible to load the UKI with Petite Boot. Um, I know that IBM is interested in, in or they, they've expressed some interest, is what I should say, um, in Nimble. So I hope that, uh, I, I don't think we've talked to the Petite Boot community. But I think it's definitely a good thing to do. And um, I know that there's interest in having this. I mean, we'd like to have this on other architectures, of course. And I think that that's a good, a good way to go.
Um, I, how, how, what do you mean by simplified hardware? Like, how, how do you so see? Thanks. <laughs> no, I, 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 discussion is awesome. <laughs> Was um, sorry. The question was whether we could uh, reduce the hardware or maybe the firmware um, uh, because of this approach. And and the, the general uh, the general answer seems to be that that we're probably that we're going to be relying on the firmware and that probably it's it's in the opposite direction. Not not to reduce, but but to, to you know to build up and to have the firmware that, that can actually do the loading. Um, uh, I don't know. Some. <laughs> Uh, the first question is about you, you said you said two. Um, okay, so the, f uh, the first question was about chain loading, and uh, we are not, uh, we don't think that Nimble should have to uh, chain load, uh, well, the, the way that we want to handle chain loading is through setting FE variables and using, using FE to do the chain loading, so it's to set boot next. Mm -hmm. um, your second question was about hardware and that you had trouble doing this kind of setup on, your, on, your, on a desktop. We haven't we haven't tried that. Uh, we, we we haven't tried. As I mentioned, it, it was um, tried at some point, but it, it um, we haven't been doing it recently. I'm sorry, you've been waiting for a long time. <laughs> um. So it's not. It's uh, nimble is not very big. Oh, I'm sorry. The size. The size wise, how it compares size wise um, to Grub. Um, so. It's uh, well, you can see it's a lot. It's a lot bigger than the Grub FE, um, but it's about it's about 50 megabytes. Um, these different these different um, nimbles. So yeah, it's it's the full net random MFS, exactly. So yes. Uh, whether we've tested with bootable containers, no, we haven't, not yet. <coughs> Sorry? We, we, we have lots of plans, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's finding the time to do them, you know. <laughs> yes, please. You mentioned that this is to give another CD that has to be addressed in Grub. But now there is a kernel upgrade. So a lot of CDs to be addressed. Have you considered system deboot? So, uh, okay, I've heard system deboot. Uh, the, the, um, you said that there, that there are CVEs, but that, that there's a, I'm sorry, I didn't understand something that you said. You say that this is to reduce a number of CVEs that have to be addressed in Grub. Mm -hmm. Now this is using the Linux kernel, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of issues in the Linux kernel as you said you say. Have you considered using something smaller, such as CD instead? Okay. 
So the, the question is whether, you know, that there, are, that there are CVEs everywhere. We're not unique in this sense, uh, and whether we would use system deboot. Um, so system deboot, uh, it also works only on UEFI. Um, and I believe that the plans are to keep it that way. Um, I mean, ultimately, the thing is that, you know, the, the kernel CVEs will get fixed no matter what. The question is, like, do we want to have more work uh, fixing more CVEs? Uh, the kernel, kernel has a lot of developers, has very high visibility, and they're able to fix the CVEs in a, in a reasonable time period. And, I mean, those aren't going to go away. The kernel CVEs aren't going to go away, whether we do this or not. Um, system deboot will, I mean, any, any bootloader that aims to, you know, replicate the things that the kernel does is ultimately going to run into the same problems as Grub. We're going to have the font CVEs, we're going to have, or, yeah, uh, we're going to have uh, file system and, and storage and memory allocation bugs. All of, the, all of that stuff is going to exist in whatever, whatever bootloader. And again, for, for an individual user, if you want to install system deboot, great. Uh, go ahead and use it. That's that's it's 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 good. It works, but as a you know as a general option, um, it's just going to have the same issues, unfortunately. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. I. It, Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We're not we're not adding more security problems since it's the same kernel than it's the same CVEs. Um, please in the back. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How would it look if the kernel isn't signed? I mean, you, 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 um, I mean, currently, I, um, no, oh, I'm sorry, um, the question was about, uh, how it would look if the kernel isn't signed, um, uh, so, uh, you need the kernel to be signed for, for Secure Boot to work. Um, and uh, I mean, the way that, I'm, that, it, that it's running right now is that you can sign yourself. Uh, so uh, I'm, to get this to work under Secure Boot, I'm signing the kernel and Nimble myself. Sorry, I have a hard time understanding. Yeah, it's possible to enroll as yeah, the, 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 through, through the mock util, through the machine owner keys, you can, you can enroll your own certificate and you can sign with your own certificate. Those are additional steps from the user, yes. Um, all of that is actually described um, in the blog, if you're interested, about how to enroll your own keys and how to sign yourself. And, yes, please. If Secure is turned off and you're still doing the rest of it, do you need to do any signing at all for everything to go through? No, if you have Secure Boot off, everything, everything works. You don't need to sign anything. Everything works uh, as it. <laughs> I guess you could k exec into a regular, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of time. I think you could, you could k exec into a unified kernel image as well. I don't know. But if, mm -hmm. Currently, it's just a, it's a kernel. It's a kernel, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm out of time. I want to thank you so much uh, for your time, for coming so early. To be
interested. <laughs>